record that got me into house music. Um, it was probably soundtracks as opposed to individual songs, but back where I grew up, which is Western Supermare, which is close to Bristol, um, we were heavily influenced by this feed from London that was sort of youth culture, which really influenced where we were at that time. I remember um, <laughs> off of the back of um, having sort of fallen into quite hedonism quite um, deeply, and it was the birth of ecstasy and all of the things that were going on around it. We had this um, cassette that um, a guy called Toby Chinna um, had done. And um, there were a number of records on it. The one that kind of sticks in my head is probably Salsa House. And there was Index, Give Me a Sign. But it was the amalgamation of all of those things that I heard. It wasn't just, oh, this is one song. Oh my God, my life's changed. It was everything and the drugs that changed it all for me. So it kind of was a moment of like epiphany. It was like, okay, nothing's the same and nothing will ever be the same again. One of my first jobs in the industry was working in a record shop called Stop On By. And that led to me getting a job at a record label called Freetown, which was run by a guy called Sankey Yo, this legend, Japanese legend. And he used to travel to New York all the time. And he signed music because he wanted to have a great house music label. He had grown, sort of lived a life going to the Paradise Garage. And when I started working for them, I was promo, worked in PR, promo guy. So I'd get, that was how I got to know all the DJs. Um, and there were two moments, there was, one which was very important to me, which was meeting Ron Trent for the first time. Um, and that was what forged my um, relationship with Shea Damier and Derek Carter. But the record that really uh, was something where I realized that this was me working in the industry and being connected with all of these people and realizing as a fan that there was legs in this job um, was People Underground. Um, which was uh, Louis Vega and Kenny Dope, Masters at Work, under an alter ego. While I was working at Freetown, I went out on a kind of PR slash DJ uh, tour, and that took me to New York, um, Chicago, and Toronto, I'm completely out of my depth, running around, going to all these record labels, and meeting all these people that were legends, like Smack Production, Derek Perez, and Going out there, I'd kind of made friends and allies and people that showed me around. It was DJ Sneak, Gemini. And I remember someone having a cassette on in the car and it was a, a record of WBMX, which was the 80s um, legendary radio shows that um, Farley, Jackmaster Funk was on. And for DJs was is one DJ that I just became obsessed with. And he was doing stuff that I was just like, what, how can you play these records together? And he played Savage Progress, Heart Begins to Beat. And I wasn't familiar with that song. It came out in the eighties, kind of an industrial record. But hearing that alongside Acid House and house music and realizing that these kind of multi genres that were really the same lane, that there was someone blending this music together and then being inspired by DJs that were doing something very similar that were the next generation, that record still sticks with me now. The reason this is my favorite record now is because I just had a moment with it. Derek Carter, Where You At? And the reason I've chosen that record today is because Beyonce used the sample of it on the front of the beginning of the transition from the show from old Beyonce to new Beyonce on the Renaissance tour. And not only being involved in all of the process with the Beyonce album, but then hearing one of my closest friends being sampled and used in that context was a real def pivotal, defining moment for me. It just, I felt just so proud to be involved in something or be a part of a culture that's transformed and transitioned all its way to a moment where it's in sort of popular culture. So Music for Freaks was the uh, the sister label to Classic at the time, even though they were run in uh, tandem but separate as that was my label with Justin Harris. We had set the label up to release our own music. And um, through that process, we did um, our first album, The Beat Diaries, and then uh, second album was The Man Who Lived Underground. And then amongst that, 
we had written or had this idea for this song called The Creeps. Um, and Justin had written this phenomenal bass line, which went on to be sampled. And we ended up having a hit with it, um, which was very simple. And we wrote this really menacing record. And that record really changed everything for us. But it basically laid the landscape for what Music for Freak wa Freaks was and what it became, which helped me learn a lot about the industry, which was kind of fascinating and what it's like to have a hit record. Um, and also my decision to not want to chase that route and just to carry on making music that I felt very passionate about. That's not to say that that record wasn't that in its first instance, but it became something else, but it really was a defining moment of what kind of artist I wanted to be. So Kenny Hawkes was um, a very good friend. This sort of really special part of my life was running a club with him called Space. And during that time, we both had radio shows on a pirate radio station in London called Girls FM. The music dictated what happened. Our love and shared interest in songs and records that were coming out really became the blueprint of what Girls FM, our version of Girls FM was and what space was to us. And one of the records that was, uh, and still is, the thing that kind of became the foundation for what the music sounded like was probably the first two or three releases on Prescription Underground, which was Shay Damier and Ron Trent's label. EP2, I can't remember if it has a title or not, but I remember the record coming in to the record shop and us listening to it, and it was like nothing we'd ever heard before. Sonically, that record and everything that came on prescription beyond that was really like, this is what we want the future to sound like. I had gone out to Chicago with Justin Harris, my partner in Freaks, and <laughs> we have a friend called Howie who had this house, it was a big loft space, and he had a party there. It was a real moment, but Honey came to that party and there were these plastic tubes. They were sort of body size in the middle of the, the loft space. And she climbed into one of the plastic tubes and proceeded to dance most of the night in this tube. And that was the point where we knew we were kind of going to be friends. And it was sort of mutual friends, of Derek and everything. That was my Chicago family. And Justin and me went away from that and we made this record called A Tribute to Howie's House. And that came out on a subsidiary of Classic, which we put two or three records out called Plastic. And that for me is something that defines mine, Derek's and Honey's relationship because it was a point where I had found these like-minded individuals that lived in a different city, but had the same passion for music and were weirdos and idiots and, and had fun together. And that was a real soundtrack for that. <music> Honey was approached by a company called Parkwood, which transpired was Beyonce's record label. We weren't aware of that at the time. They asked if she would like to be involved in working on an album that Beyonce had a non-idea for and wanted to do. And obviously we said yes. <laughs> and so uh, Honey and myself built these playlists, which Beyonce took away and studied. And, um, and in the interim, we just carried on working on music and submitting music. And um, it progressed and it started to turn into, oh wait, actually this is the thing. She liked some of the music we've sent. And all of those records we then started to kind of produce and reproduce, etc. And it wasn't until really far into the process, almost before release, where the A&R was sent over um, to play me and Honey and Chris. So they flew to play us the songs and we heard the two songs that we were involved in, Cozy and Alien Superstar, for the first time that actually were our original productions with her singing. on. And that was our first kind of idea of oh my god this is really real this is really happening but we didn't get to hear the album until the album came out and then it became quite significant that after we listened to the album that a lot of the things that we had been involved in were 
in the very makings of that album, that, which felt really special. And aside from me saying, oh, Cozy is my favorite song on the album, actually the one that really felt significant was Pure Honey, and still is Pure Honey, because I always wanted to hear a, a track like that in a crossover pop uh, world, because I thought the realms of doing that or having those moments were quite significant. And the fact that she turned out this crazy Chicago record and did something else with it, with just her voice over the top, felt really special to me. Right and left, take more. Future, Renaissance. 